Hello there, I'm Kyo Saronin Beatmaker, and welcome to Lounge Ronin. All things, everything. And on this episode, we're going to discuss Jesus married Mary Magdalene and fathered two children. And before we get into it, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts below. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of this story regarding Jesus Christ having two children with Mary Magdalene. But uh, I've recently heard about it um, more in detail, uh, recently watching a video by uh, a researcher and pastor by the name of Paul Wallace. And uh, after finding some articles and some more information that confirmed this story, I felt like I got to share this with everyone. So without further ado, let's get into it. article was written over November 10th, 2014 by April Holloway. Transcription of ancient manuscript suggests Jesus married, Man, uh, married Mary Magdalene and had two children. An ancient manuscript, an ancient manuscript on earth at the British Library and dating back nearly 1500 years says that Jesus married Mary Magdalene and had two children with their names and descendants reportedly given in detail in the text. The Church of England has dismissed the claims saying it is closer to the fictional Da Vinci Code than historical accounts which I have read uh, The Da Vinci Code and I did see the film and I found the, well, I found the book great and the film was not bad, to be honest. One thing I think is interesting and uh, I've talked about this in previous live streams is there's always a bit of truth in legends. And even with stories that you know Dan Brown has written, you have to kind of ask yourself where is he getting some of his information from? Because you know there is obviously a level of some truth to his uh, stories because he's clearly doing research and basing it off of um, historical evidence and characters and stories. Uh, it's no different than another author I, I unfortunately I cannot remember his name but he has a book called the the six extinction it's part of a a big book series of this uh special uh united states uh secret government agency that deals with um various types of environmental social cultural uh threats it's really fascinating and even in his stories at the end of his book, even though it's fictional, <laughs> he has um, sources for all of the uh, technology or references that he makes because he does use a lot of real world um, stories and technology and situations in his uh, fictional writing. And that's something I think, you know, a lot of us, when we read fictional writing, 
that's based on historical events, similar to the Da Vinci Code, you know, books of that kind of um, genre bending, you kind of have to ask yourself, like, you know, where are they getting these ideas from? Yeah, of course, you know, creative inspiration from the muses and what have you, but sometimes they come up with ideas or or plot points that are so specific and they give you, you know, detail that you might end up being curious to look it up. So I think it's kind of interesting how um, the the Church of England is is quick to dismiss this. Um, but we'll uh, we'll get into the um, into the lack of support the Church of England has in such a dismissal. Fortunately. We, we we have to keep in mind that whether it's the church, um, the, the the government, you know these institutions, we can't fully trust them and take their word for it because of how much they've lied or abused their own power. Okay, the so-called lost gospel which has been translated from Aramaic by professor of religious studies, Barry Wilson and historical writer, Simcha Jacob Bovisil, Bovisi, something like that, I apologize, allegedly reveals the startling new allegations according to the Sunday Times. Professor Wilson said on his website that he found the ancient Cyric manuscript lurking in the British Museum, dating from the 6th century, but translated much earlier Greek writing, but translated from much earlier Greek writing. He added that scholars have known about it for almost 200 years, but have not known what to make of it. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds more like they didn't want to acknowledge it. According to Wilson and uh, Jacob, the manuscript includes details about Jesus' political connections to the Roman Emperor Tiberius and one of his generals, uh, Senjaris, and says that there was an assassination attempt on Jesus 13 years before his execution. However, the most controversial claim is that Jesus married Mary Magdalene and raised two children with her during his time in Nazareth and abroad. We'll get into that. Here is Jesus and Mary Magdalene painting by Antonio de Cordorio, Correggio, 1534. <laughs> Apologies. Wilson and Jacob are not the first to claim that Jesus had a romantic relationship with Mary Magdalene. Theologians and researchers have been speculating on the subject for centuries, but it became most popular following the release of the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, which put forward the hypothesis that Jesus married Magdalene and had one or more children and that those children or their descendants immigrated to what is now southern France. Once there, they intermarried with the noble families that would eventually become the Merovingian dynasty. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if that ties into... Hmm. That's interesting. This theory was further pursued by Dan Brown in his best-selling historical thriller, The Da Vinci Code, who wrote that the figure had the right hand of Jesus in Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper is not the Apostle John, but actually Mary Magdalene. Here is the photo. 
of the Last Supper. The claim that Jesus was married was once again thrown into the spotlight in 2012 when an Egyptian uh, papyrus fragment was translated into English and was found to contain an explicit reference to Jesus being married. The so-called Gospel of Jesus dates from the, the 8th century and includes the line, Jesus said to them, my wife, and she will be able to be my disciple. Here is the papyrus. A fragment from the Gospel of Jesus' wife. It, it is a bit hard to know. It is a bit hard to know what to make of the lost gospel claims until further information and hopefully images of the original text are released for verification. But a look at the publisher's website does draw into question the authenticity of the claim as it describes Wilson and Jacob's book as, as part historical detective story, part modern adventure. Nevertheless, the preview of the book does look intriguing and it will be interesting to see the response of the academic world. The Church of England has dismissed the claims made in the Lost Gospel, saying it is closer to popular fiction than an accurate historical event, account. This appears to share more with Dan Brown than Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, a church spokesman told the Sunday Times. Interesting. Well, it's interesting and funny how quick the, the Church of England will be to dismiss it, despite the fact that they literally have another record of it in England. So I just, it's, it's funny to me how um, the Church of England is acting like, uh, yeah, this is total BS. Despite the fact that there is um, historical evidence in England of Jesus Christ visiting England for a time. There is historical evidence proving that uh, Jesus Christ spent time and most likely may have died in India. Now, I'll probably do a, another live stream discussing uh, Jesus Christ and uh, his ties to Buddha. Uh, that, that's going to take an, uh, some time to kind of work on and break that one down because um, I recently watched a video and I said it earlier by Paul Wallace. Shout out to him. Uh, and uh, I got to do some more research and kind of rewatch that video and get my thoughts together because it was a lot of information and very illuminating. And it kind of reaffirmed some talking points that I have had in regards to discussions I've had with people in the past and of recently. So I felt really good. <laughs> about that and i was like yes <laughs> i was right but it, it, it's just it's it's not right like oh yeah but it's more of like i was right like there is more to this story than what we're being told and uh the connection with jesus christ and buddha is very startling it's very groundbreaking and in many ways it would completely upset um, the the church, and and, I, and that's part of the reason why you know they're not going to acknowledge this and dismiss this um, this manuscript because it goes against the narrative. You know, if if you've listened to my past live streams. You, you, if you notice some of the themes, I always talk about topics that go against 
the narrative. And that's something that they are, they will continuously ensure that there is um, nothing that goes against the narrative. And if it is out there, they will do everything they can to um, dismiss it, ridicule it, uh, just anything they can to um, make sure that no one believes an alternative viewpoint, so much so that they go to ruining these people's careers and um and their and their personal lives and and this is the issue that we keep on seeing that keeps on going on whether it's the mainstream media whether it's the academic institutions uh anytime that there is information old or new discoveries that conflict with the narrative they are quick to either dismiss it they're quick to um wrap it up hide it seal it away i'm t i'm talking to you smithsonian i'm talking to you the vatican uh, <laughs> you know and, and 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 it's just how are we as humans how are we as individuals how are we supposed to understand our history if they if they keep it hidden from us like think about that you know if, if we're if we're going to um believe that if we're going to confirm that jesus was a real historical figure then we need to tell the whole story we need to tell his entire story. We can't just be selective with his stories and completely ignore the stories of Jesus Christ in Japan or in China or in India or in the UK. Yeah, I'll let that sink in for a little bit. There are stories. Go out there and you'll find them. But they don't want to talk about that. You know, you go go pull up a Gnostic Bible and, and you'll be surprised with what you what what you learn and uncover. And, and that's you know, that's kind of the 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 issue that I have sometimes with um religious institutions that they don't allow you to ask questions. More importantly, they don't allow you to ask specific questions. Specific questions that um, expose the holes in the narrative, that expose the blatant manipulation. And it's not fair to... Um, religious uh practitioners that their their own religion is is lying to them and is obfuscating certain historical events of their religious figures in order to push us in order to push and control a certain narrative which allows them to control people via political um influences um military influences corporate influences if, if you don't think that the vatican doesn't have its hand in any of these things i mean ask yourself why the vatican has its own cia how many of you knew that <laughs> so you know these are these are things that you know i don't nobody really takes time to ask these questions because you know people have their own lives they don't have time and and also you know ignorance is bliss uh, people are very very comfortable in in the in their ignorance and they do not want anybody anybody mucking up that ignorance uh, because then you know we have to take in consideration that oftentimes that ignorance 
is part of their personality and to then and to then um draw into question their ignorance and make them question their own ignorance makes them question their own personality and sometimes they don't even have a personality because their personality is the ignorance and that can sometimes cause <laughs> more harm than good even though you're actually trying to do something good for them you're completely shattering their entire belief system and so many things that are out there that is researchable and verified it would shatter the entire narrative it's it's it really is an incredibly mind-boggling fascinating situation because you know with this first article and the church of england completely dismissing the egyptian papyrus talking about G referencing jesus right wife as you know fantastical okay well oh what do you know release april 14th april april 10th 2014 by april holloway shout out to april scientists say papyrus refer referring Scientists say papyrus refer refer <laughs> scientists I forgot how to say the word scientists say papyrus referring <laughs> referring <laughs> scientists say papyrus referring to wife of Jesus is no fake fancy that Church of England fancy that. <clears throat> In September 2012, a faded fragment of papyrus, which was controversial, came to be known as the Gospel of Jesus' Wife, made international headlines when it was unveiled by Harvard Divinity School historian Karen L. King. The announcement, unsurprisingly, was met with both anger and elation, as well as a great deal of skepticism as it contained a phrase never seen before in any other scripture. Jesus said to them, my wife, and she will be able to be my disciple, a phrase that stirred debate over whether women should be allowed to be priests. An, an editorial in the Vatican's newspaper declared the papyrus was a fake. Of course as did a number of other scholars. However, the fragment has now been thoroughly tested by scientists who concluded in a report published in the Harvard Theological Review that the ink actually pigment and the papyrus have ancient origins and the fragment is not therefore a modern forgery. The papyrus fragment has now been tested by scientists at Columbia University, Harvard University, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, who carried out carbon dating as well as micro Raman spectroscopy to determine the chemical composition of the ink. The results revealed that the papyrus can be dated to approximately 700 to 800 AD. And it is consistent with other papyra from the fourth to eighth centuries. The carbon black ink, actually a type of pigment, was typical of that used in other papyra of the time. And the text did not show any variations or inconsistencies which would suggest doctoring. The text is written in Sahadik, a language of ancient Egypt, and the study authors have suggested that it may be transcription of an earlier Coptic text that was based on the Greek copy made centuries earlier, as many early Christian Gospels are. Therefore, a date of 700 to 800 AD does not mean that this was the first time the text appeared. Hmm. However, scientific analysis is not always enough to convince some. The Harvard Theological Review is also publishing 
a counterpiece of Egyptian by Egyptologists at Brown University, Leo Depute, whose paper predates the scientific analysis. <laughs> Wait. So let me get this straight. I, I gotta pause here. The Harvard Theological Review is also publishing a counterpiece by a Egyptian a, a Egyptologist at Brown University whose paper predates a scientific analysis. So why is he putting it out now? Well, I mean, this was years ago, but like, that just seems foolish. According to a report on the story in the New York Times, uh, Dr. D said that the testing the fragment was irrelevant and saw no need to inspect it. <laughs> He said he decided that it is a fake based on a newspaper photograph of the papyrus in which he saw grammatical errors as well as similarity to the writing in the Gospel of Thomas. In a rebuttal, King finds uh, D's sexual analysis unpersuasive. Yeah, I would either. He just, like, come on now. Uh, Dr. King has been quick to point out that the test results do not prove that Jesus had a wife or disciples who were women, only that the fragment is ancient rather than forged. She does hope, however, that the discussion, commentary, and focus can now move on from it is fake to what does it what does all this mean? Which I agree. But there is um confirmation that he did have a wife and children. Uh and, and it's you go to India, there's a town in India um and I, and I, like i said i'm going to probably do a, a part 2 to this um to this live stream but in that story in india they talk about a man a, a jewish man from palestine who lived in india um with his uh, wife and children uh, aiding the people in the area and dying of the age of 80 so, you know, there are multiple stories confirming this. And even the 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 manuscript in the British uh library, and I'll point I'll pull that up for you right now. Hold on. Come on. No, oh, that's why. Okay. All right, so this is written by Fiona Keating, uh, 1109, 2014. Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene and father to children, says British Library Manuscript. Um, the 14, uh, the 1450 year old document claims Jesus and Mary had two children. All right, so this is the manuscript that, was, that we, in the first article, talked about. Okay. A manuscript dating back to 1,450 years discovered in British Library is behind claims that Jesus Christ married Mary Magdalene and had two children. A new book, The Lost Gospel by Professor and Religious Studies, Barry Wilson, an historical writer, uh, uh, Shmicha J. Jacob also includes details that there was an assassination attempt on the Son of God 13 years before his execution. On his website, Wilson scribed his findings of the ancient Cyric manuscript lurking in the British Museum dating from the uh, 6th century that translated from much earlier Greek writing. Scholars have known about it for almost 200 years but have not known what to do with it. Again, they've known about it for 200 years, but they haven't said anything. Why is that the case? And why is that the case that there are other same story told, but in other regions of the world describing a Jewish man from Palestine? What about his uncle, who was a merchant and who was friends with... um? Pilus, the guy who prosecuted Jesus Christ. 
And why was it that Jesus Christ was only on the cross for six hours when they're normally supposed to be on the cross for three days? But, you know, we'll, I, I digress. Um, yeah, the new book also contains revelations of Jesus' political connections to the Roman Emperor Tiberius and one of his top generals, C. Janus. Theories that Jesus was married have circulated for many years. One of the latest findings in September 2012 was the discovery of an Egyptian papyrus fragment, which some scholars believe to be the first explicit reference to Jesus being married. Uh, scientific testing has verified that the so-called gospel of Jesus is not a modern forgery and likely dates back to the 18th century. Uh, Harvard University Divinity Professor Karen L. King made an announcement concerning the fragile relic, which in an incomplete fragment with Coptic script, which is based off the Coptic, uh, Coptic Christians, the fourth line of the text contains the words, Jesus said to them, my wife, followed in the next line by, she is able to be my disciple. You know, okay, why? And then ask yourself, why won't the church talk about the book of Mary? Why won't the church talk about the book of Enoch? Ask yourself these questions. Ask yourself these questions. Why are these books legitimate, real, but they're considered not canonical? Ask yourself those questions and then circle back. Uh, I'm basically hoping that we can move past the issue of forgery to questions about the significance of this fragment for the historic history of Christianity. We're thinking about questions like, why does Jesus being married or not even matter? Why is it that people had such an incredible reaction to this? The Church of England, we know, has dismissed it and 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 da 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 da. -da. Um, but this is, you know, I wanted to bring up another article because just to, to get you guys to see, it's not. There's more people talking about this. Is a, a real thing. Um. And you know they're in, and they're not you know talking about the Gnostic texts, and and how they talk about Christ and his family and those relations. So th there are so many things to this story that need further investigation and need further um, commentary and open dialogue and discussion. Like I said, this information has been known since two thousand and twelve. Why is there no further discussion on it? Uh, why are we not pushing the narrative to know what does what are the implications of this? Uh, so you know, I think I'm gonna do um, you know a couple more parts to this, probably talking about his travels after um, being crucified on the cross, uh, and and probably some more on Mary Magdalene. See if I can find. Uh, Book of Mary, get some more information on that. I do have another article about um, these uh, um, historical um, artifacts that relate to Mary and her church. <laughs> Spoiler alert, <laughs> she was considered his one of his uh, closest uh, teachers and disciples. And she helped fund a lot of his travels and uh, speaking events. Uh, so, well, I'm going to do some more research and, and, and do a presentation on that because I think that's some really interesting stuff there. But, you know, the reason why I want to do this is, is to put this out there, to, to start that conversation and to see if any other people out there have heard about this and are interested in doing their own research. And, and please do and, and feel free to share whatever you uncover because um, I think you know this is stuff that, that's important it needs to be discussed you know there's there's you know I, I'm, I'm not I don't I'm I'm I don't practice Christianity but I appreciate it and I respect it nonetheless and I do and I always get you know I, I get frustrated with the church because I'm like why can't we have these discussions why can't we talk about the technology that's written in the book of Enoch? 
You know, why can't we talk about um, Inky and Enlil? Why can't we talk about uh, the connection of Horus and Christianity? You know, why can't we talk about these questions? Why can't we talk about the, the, the Anunnaki and Elohim? I don't understand this. Why can't we not have the, the, the conversation that, you know, Buddhism predates Christianity and Christ may possibly be a reincarnation of Buddha? Why can't we have that conversation? I hope you enjoyed this episode of Lounge Ronin. All things, everything. And if you made it this far, please. Make sure to hit that like button and share the video if you like what you hear. And make sure to leave a comment with your thoughts below as that would really help me grow. And I just want to get to hear your thoughts, develop a conversation and develop a rapport with you. So make sure you get those uh, fingers burning with some questions, thoughts, concerns, and criticisms. So until next time, stay positive, stay focused, stay true, and much love.